Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Okay, so today I'm going to be painting Santa's List and I'm going to be sipping on some chai, vanilla chai tea today. So if you do enjoy this process, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, fire red, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, and green oxide. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that we'll use for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and I'll even throw in the piece of chalk for you. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be doing the background for, we'll call it the wall and the table. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush the colors that I'm going to be using are red, yellow, white, brown, and black. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to pre-mix myself a pretty peachy color for the wall background and we'll utilize that plus black and brown for the, um, for the table. So I've pre-mixed myself the peach color and I'll show you how I got to it. So this is kind of where I'm headed. I need some of my red for later, so I'm not going to mix all of my red. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my red and set it aside for later. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of my yellow and mix it into my red. Just kind of turning this so you can see it a little bit differently. So I'm going to take a bunch of my yellow and mix it in with my red. Spin that around a little bit. And I'm going for a really kind of like a rich orange color to start and then once I've got that orange type of tone that I'm looking for I will add white to it so this is looking pretty good to me and now I'm going to add some white to it and you can really get this as light or as dark as you'd like uh, I want mine to just be kind of complementary to the rest of the painting so I want it to just you know have a, a sense of festive type of color that's going to be complementary to the rest of my painting and when you mix these um, I would say background type of colors for your painting because I'm using this the colors that are within all of my foreground objects to create this background color it will become a complementary color and will harmonize the painting with with um, the tones that are in it. So I like to do these um, backgrounds in, to complement the rest of the painting. So I'm pretty much there. Just want a little bit more white. I know it'll get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm going to just make sure I've got it light enough so when it does have that bit of a color shift, it'll, it'll work out well for me. And you might want to go for just like a creamy color um, for your background. Whatever is visually appealing to you is totally fine. So that's looking pretty good to me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark my canvas 
I want my my wall to come up down about three quarters of the way down my canvas. So I'm going to visually pick a halfway spot and then about halfway between there and the bottom of my canvas I'll just make myself a mark and I'll do the same thing on the other side. You can either use that same process or you can just use your brush to say how high it is on your brush go over to the other side and just mark yourself a spot. That'll stop you from going too far down your canvas. Because I know myself, when I am doing these um, large areas like this, I tend to just kind of get away, you know, just kind of get lost in the whole painting process. And before I know it, I've covered the entire canvas when I didn't really want to. So giving myself these little barriers or um, places to stop visually helps me to just kind of keep myself in check, make sure I stop when I want to stop, and it'll provide an easier painting process for, for me because I know, again, I just like to just keep painting. So I will, my brush just keeps going and going even if I don't want it to. So I'm just kind of finishing up getting down to this quarter way mark. And then once I get down to the quarter way mark, I'm gonna start picking up black and brown to finish the bottom of my canvas. So I'm really just going for something that is of a darker type of tone that's gonna sit well and act as a nice, you know, background for Santa's letter and the, you know, all the other elements that we're gonna be having in the painting. So I'm down there now. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just picking up a touch of black and a touch of brown, both on my brush at the same time, on my dirty brush. And I'm going to go straight across like this, and I'm going to overlap it a little bit into that, um, that wall color. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I just want it to look like it's kind of out of focus down at the bottom of the wall and the back of the table. And by getting them to blend in like this, it's going to give you that effect of it receding back into the canvas. So now I'm just picking up black, brown, and my peach color to just finish up this table. So you can get it again as light or as dark as you want. I had, had dropped a little peach down here, so we'll just pick that up. And you can, like I said, get it to go as light or as dark as you want. Most of it's gonna be covered up by the um, piece of paper that we're gonna be putting on later, so don't feel the need to get this table into a perfect place. And then once you've got this all done, we are going to be utilizing the same large brush for the next step, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting some out of focus glow dots. <laughs> So these are going to be in the background behind the Christmas tree quill. I just want it to look like it's out of focus, like Santa Claus is somewhere in his holiday room with all these twinkly out of focus lights behind him, holiday lights. So that's, I'm going to call it glow dots. <laughs> I'm going to use my large brush. I do want to forewarn you that before you start this step, it will be easier if your wall is dry, the wall area of your painting is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry. Whatever method works best for you. So the colors that I'm going to be using are mostly just yellow and white, but I might dip into my peach color as well if I need to. So I'm going to start with just yellow paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of circles in various sizes with just yellow paint. My yellow that I'm using is very translucent, so it's going to provide us with this glow type of look to it where it's just kind of lighting up the background. And I'm going to do it all over the place in all different kinds of sizes and shapes. And some are going to overlap each other and some are going to be smaller or bigger than the others. And then once I've got yellow ones, I'm going to pick up yellow plus a teeny tiny bit of white, like not much white at all. And then I'm going to do more of them. <laughs> so these ones are going to be a little bit lighter. You can have them overlapping the, the first ones. You can make them small. You can really just in, enjoy the process. I'm just using uh, my brush and turn. I got a little bit of red on my brush. So hold on, let me just wa wipe that off a bit. Um, so again, yellow with a teeny tiny bit of white paint and 
just enjoy the process. In a second, I'm gonna do some with a little bit more white on my brush, so that way it'll give you a third brightness to these. You can make them solid, but I'm just kind of getting them to have these soft edges to them and just kind of continuing to spin my brush around so I have these, you know, different sizes. I'm bringing, I'm gonna bring some down in through here. So they are going all the way down my wall. Again, small ones, big ones. This area is gonna be taken up a lot with my um, arm of my, of my Santa. So right now I'm gonna pick up my yellow plus a little bit more white. So I'm gonna get a little more aggressive with the brightness of it. And what I suggest you do when you start picking up more white is just wipe your brush off on your paper towel so you don't have too much paint on your brush. Um, otherwise you might go too vibrant and you won't, it'll be a little bit tough to back off. And you can, and like I said, you can make them as bright as you want. Um, I am gonna put, again, a tiny bit of a couple that are a little bit lighter, so they're gonna show more evidence of bright bulbs, so to speak, but you can make them as bright as you want. You can put some off to the side, and if you go too far and you're like, oh my God, there's too, I, I made them too, too bright, just let them dry for a minute, and then you can come back with that peach color on top of them. So once you've got your, your glow dots all nice and glowing and you have as many as you want, make them as in focus or out of focus as you want, we are going to be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away and I just kind of keep rubbing them until they are nice and soft looking and just kind of keep working them until I feel like they are have drifted off into the distance behind and out of focus. And then again, we'll be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So whenever you are ready, you can just put your big brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for the hand and the piece of paper. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I'll give you a couple of markers. We'll make the markers, then we'll connect the dots, and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have some basic shapes that we can color in. So I'm gonna do the piece of paper first, so that way we have a good um, idea of where to put the hand after that. So I'm having this uh, like an old kind of piece of paper that just has a little bit of bend and swirl to it. So we're, I'm gonna give mine a little bit of movement. You could certainly make yours flat if you want to. So I'm gonna, on the left-hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna make a mark about halfway between where my um, wall meets my, my tabletop and the bottom of my canvas. So somewhere right about here is where I'm gonna make my first marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over about to the center of my canvas, left to right. Maybe, maybe it might be a little bit to the left of the center. This is the center, I'm a little bit to the left. And I'm up maybe about an inch, inch and a half, almost to where my, um, my tabletop meets my wall. And then I'm gonna connect these two with a swirly kind of line. So you can go right to left or left to right, wherever your comfort zone is. I'm just gonna dip it down a little bit in through here and then meet it back up right in that marker. So then the next mark that I'm gonna make is over on the right hand side. So this, this mark is gonna be about an inch in from the edge and it's a little bit lower than this one. So just come down or maybe about as low as the bottom of your piece of paper, somewhere in there. I'm gonna make a marker and then I'm gonna connect these two with a little bit of a curved line to start and then I'm just gonna kind of bring this up. So it's a little, little bit of an angle in through here, but it doesn't have to be. You can even make it a little wobbly if you want to, whatever works for you. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a marker down at the bottom of my canvas, a little bit to the right of the center. So if this is the center, I'm about an inch to the right of that, and then I will connect that to here. This is going to be, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of an upward diagonal line from here maybe about an inch and a half, and then I will connect this with this with a little sw sw swirl type of line that kind of mimics what you see over on this side. So that's gonna be my piece of paper. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, um, my hand on. So my hand I'm gonna have coming oh, about up to the midway point, top to bottom, so you can make your self a mark just about in the center 
of the canvas, so somewhere in through there, a little bit to the right of this corner in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself another little bit of a marker, which is going to be just slightly down from here, right about in through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to here with what would be like three finger, three finger, finger knuckles. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over to the left hand side. I'm going to give myself a little bump there, one bump, two bumps, and then I'm going to do a third bump bringing it into there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a curved line in through here. This is going to represent the edge of one of these fingers. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a curved line there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this little corner in through here. Because what we're doing is we're putting the hand in front of the paper right in through there. So that's going to be all I'm going to do on the outline over here. From here, I'm going to come down, I would say maybe about an inch, an inch, inch and a half, and then over to the right, I'm going to be maybe about halfway between there and the edge of my canvas, something somewhere right about in through here. And I'm going to connect here to here with, this will be like the wrist of our Santa. And then this is going to be the top part of the, the hand itself. So something like that. I'm going to connect or I'm going to make a little loop from here to about here. So this is going to be the inside of my Santa sleeve. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another kind of loop around this one. So I'm going to go a little bit to the right of there and then down to right about in through here. I'm going to make myself a little bit of a loop around that like that. This is going to represent the hand and then this is the inside of the sleeve. You'll see you'll see how it all plays out in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I don't want that in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the outside of the sleeve. So I'm going to come to right about in through here and I'm going to connect this to the top of here with a big kind of um, arcing line that'll mimic whatever you did in through here. So I'm going to do this arcing line. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher than here and then back down in through there. I'm going to give myself a bit of the, the red sleeve, so come down from here a little bit, and then just give yourself kind of a wobbly line that goes up, and then I'll do another one down here. So maybe a little bit up from here. This is the back part of the sleeve. And then that's all I'm going to be doing for the outline. So once you've got that done, you can do any adjustments that you need. You can put your chalk away. We'll be using our medium brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing the base coat for all of these sections, for the hand, the um, sleeve, and the, and the piece of paper. I'm going to start with my medium brush, but I'll probably switch to my large brush halfway through. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to paint this little section in, oh, the colors I'm using is black, white, brown, and red. And what I'm going to first do is I'm going to paint this little section in here with some black paint. So this is going to be a real deep shadowy area in through the inside of the sleeve and I just want to make sure that I, I have that coming right out of the gate. And then what I'm going to do with my dirty brush is I'm going to create myself just a gray color for the base coat of the hand. So I, I have black on my brush right now and I'm just going to kind of spin it in some of my white paint in through here. You can even use your dirty white paint if you wanted to, if you had some dirty white paint like I do. Just making like a medium kind of tone for my gray, not too light, not too dark, just somewhere right in the middle, and yours doesn't even have to be the same exact color as mine. And I'm just going to paint in the entire hand section. So when you come to here, just bring it all the way to the edge, bring it all the way to the bottom, bring it all the way to the chalk marks. It doesn't even have to be a solid color. This is really just going to represent the base coat for the gloves, so we will definitely be um, adding highlights and shadows and all kinds of other little fun stuff on top of it, so don't feel that it has to be a perfect coat. You'll probably have some areas that are a little bit lighter than others or darker than others, and you know, that's, that's totally fine. And I'm just going all the way to the edge, making sure that I um, bring it all the way into this little curved 
area that we have because this is going to represent one of the fingertips so I just want to make sure that I've got that represented and you can see my color gets a little bit darker as it dries especially since we have another color underneath it and then what I'm going to do I'm going to switch brushes to actually let me I'm going to paint with this gray paint I'm going to paint inside this little area in through here too. So I've got that gray paint. I'm going to paint this little section in through here as well. That's going to be kind of the, the curved inside part of the sleeve as it's turning. And then I'm going to put my small or my medium brush away. I'm going to take out my large brush. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to color the piece of paper with a tan color. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white paint and mix it in with some of my brown. I'm just going for a medium kind of tone. You could certainly incorporate a, a little bit of yellow into it, but again, we're gonna be doing some highlights and shadows. We're just going for a base coat. So I've got my, my tan color that I'm gonna be using as my base coat for my piece of paper. I just slow down a little bit along those edges. But again, if yours isn't, doesn't come out perfect along the edges, don't worry. We can, we can make those nice and clean when we do the, um, all of the details that we're gonna be doing on top of it. And then I'm just gonna bring this right to my chalk. I'm bringing it right to the, um, the hand area that we have there. And if by the time you get done this step, you still see some of your chalk or there's a little bit of space between your objects, again, no need to, to worry about that because the future steps will take care of that. So I've planned it so by the time we're done, we'll have all of those elements taken care of. And then once I've got this section done, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush to get those other two little areas painted in. So just finishing up this section in through here, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna go in for this red section first. So I'm choosing to use my large brush because on these two um, spaces specifically, I want it to look like there's texture. So I'm gonna be using a dotting type of um, stippling brush stroke. So I just loaded my brush with red paint and I want the edges to be kind of little fluffy looking. So I'm just dotting it along the edges and then I'm just gonna dot it all the way down. This gives you a really nice natural textured type of look um, as the paint dries because the paint will be different shades depending on if it's uh, thick or thin. So this gives you a real um, kind of uniform type of uh, texture to it. And again, we'll be doing highlights and shadows. So I'm washing and drying my brush and then I'm gonna go in for the base coat of here. So what I'm gonna do for the base coat is I'm gonna use my gray and my brown and I'm gonna, uh, my gray and my tan and I'm gonna dot it. So I'm gonna pick up gray and tan at the same time and I'm gonna dot it. So this is gonna give me a really great neutral tone for the underneath portion of the fluffy white section that I will be doing on the sleeve. So you may find that yours is, you know, a little bit more brown than mine or a little bit more gray than mine. Whatever works is totally fine. When you get down to the piece of paper, I'm just going to slow down a little bit and I might leave myself a tiny bit of a visual space between the two just so I don't get myself confused if my color is too similar from one section to the other. But I'm using that dotting, stippling type of um, brush stroke to get it on here so I have light spots and dark spots and we've got some cool um, dimensional element just starting right off the bat, bringing it right to that red. Even if some of your red is wet and you bump into it, don't worry about it. And then we are going to be using our um, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you could put your large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the tree. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are green and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do kind of the, a place marker or what would be the, the trunk of the tree 
we're going to be putting the actual pen part on later, so I'm not going to be extending the trunk in front of the um, hand yet. We're just going to put the tree part on it. So I want this to resemble like a um, a quill to a, to an ink pen. So I want it to look almost like have a f movement to it, like the feather part to the um, to a quilled pen. So I am loading my brush with green and black. I'm going to give myself a starting and stopping point. So I know that the pen itself is going to be, uh, wherever this point is, I'm going to have the base of my tree about an inch above that, so somewhere in through here. And then the tip of my tree, I'm going to have way over here. So this is going to be maybe about an inch and a half in from here and maybe about three inches from the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two with a fun kind of arcing line. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to go up and then just kind of back down in through here. And this is just going to give me my starting point for where I want all of the um, tree branches to go. So I'm going to be alternating green and black paint on my brush. So I just picked up black, the next time I'll pick up green and I just keep alternating those two colors so I can have a good um, assortment of colors throughout the tree. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to be always using a down and out type of brush stroke. So I've got this coming down and out. I want the bottom of my tree is going to come, I would say, probably right a, a little bit past here, somewhere in through there. And then over on the left hand side, I'm going to have it past the hand a little bit. So I'm just kind of bringing this out past my hand a little bit with these little feathery kind of motions along the bottom. And then this is meant to resemble a pine tree, which would get more narrow. It's typically like the shape of a triangle. So I'm going to, this is the widest my branches will be. And then as they go up towards the tip of my tree, they'll get more narrow and more narrow. So I'm going to work from my center of my tree and just go down and out is going to be my brush stroke. I'm reloading my brush with green paint. So I'm just going to continue this down and out type of brush stroke, knowing that as I work my way up the tree, I'm going to want it to get more narrow and more narrow, but it's also leaning over in this direction in through here. So as I go towards this little tip, I am mindful that I want that tip to remain kind of pointy. So I am just, if it was to stand up, what would these branches be doing? So that's in my head what I'm thinking as I am as I'm painting these you know stand that tree nice and tall and where would those those little branches be so I'm gonna make this nice and full over here and they don't all have to come out in exactly the same direction and you don't just need them to go right and left you can also do some down that middle so don't feel like it has to extend all the way out left and right each and every time and i just kind of keep layering these colors so black and green and i'm trying not to overpaint it and by that i mean i'm not going to sit in one spot and just continually paint 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 in one spot i really just keep moving and allowing myself to have a lot of this green represented and a lot of the black represented and trying to give myself lots of movement and some of these branches are going to be longer and some are going to be shorter so that's how I'm going to approach it and you can certainly continue to fiddle with yours you can leave little peekaboo spots along the edges we're going to have a ton of lights that are going to be adorning your tree so don't feel the need to make it perfect because we'll be able to give it a lot of extra life when we um, put the lights on it and then we're going to be utilizing this medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our piece of paper. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, my tan, white, and my peach color that I had from my uh, wall color. So I'm gonna do this as I'm gonna put my shadows in first and then we'll um, add some dimension to the piece of paper with some highlights and it'll look like it's got a bunch of movement and it's three dimensional. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a shadow underneath the piece of paper on the table. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to 
just kind of identify the edge of this piece of paper in through here. And then I'm really just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of a curved line at where it blends into the edge of the, the piece of paper right here. So I'm really just kind of giving myself an outline underneath this, this edge as it's working its way down towards the bottom of the canvas. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel without washing it, just wiping it off, and I'm gonna pick up some brown paint. So I have a little bit of black plus brown. I'm gonna extend this um, corner and provide the information of the underside of this piece of paper. So I'm gonna take from right here and I'm gonna extend it in a curved line over to this edge, but I'm gonna leave a little tiny edge of the piece of paper as the light color, and then I take my brush and I'm going to just kind of rub in this darkness on this underside of the piece of paper. So I don't necessarily want it black, so if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel, and then just rub this until it gets a little bit lighter and lighter as it goes towards the edge of that piece of paper, so something like this. And you might find that if it doesn't work out for you, let it dry and then just paint it back the tan color and try it again, and just give it a little bit darker of an underside. Then without washing my brush, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the left side of my piece of paper and I am considering this to be a part that's kind of rolled over. So I want a, sh the, a shadowy area right in through here on the piece of paper. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just picking up a little bit more brown paint and I'm going to connect right here to about here. So this is about halfway between um, my paper here and the edge of my canvas. So something right about here, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a line so this is meant to be a continual line for the edge of the piece of paper as it's rolling over, something like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brown and blend it into my tan color. So I'm gonna just kind of start maneuvering my brush like this so it becomes soft and blended in with this tan in through here. I will pick up this tan in a second but right now I'm just working the paint as it's drying so it can um, get to that soft look. And now I'm picking up some of that tan and without washing my brush, and I'm gonna get these two to blend in. I'll pr I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown as well just so I can get these two to stay moist as they are blending in and that's gonna give me a nice a nice gradual soft blend from this dark area into the light and I just keep picking up my tan color to make sure that whatever dark remnants I had on my brush are working themselves off and it's going to work itself into the lighter area of the piece of paper. So I'm just making sure my tan is of course a little bit lighter. When it is wet, when it dries, it will be more that color in through there. Your paint may not shift as much as mine does as it dries, but I, I know to plan for that visually, so I'm not, um, a I don't get nervous as it's, as it's wet. And then as I come up in through this region, I do want um, it to get a little bit lighter on, on here. So that's where I'm going to make myself a lighter version of my tan. And I'm gonna do that with my tan. I'm gonna add some of my peach color and white. So I've got my tan here. I'm gonna add a little bit of peach into it and a little bit of white. The peach is gonna make it more of a luminescent kind of um, light, lively color as opposed to just a, a gray type of tone. So I'm utilizing that peach to give me a little bit more of a light creamy color. So I've got that on my brush right now and I'm gonna use that as my highlighted part of my piece of paper. So I'm using that light creamy color. I'm bringing it all the way to the edge where it meets my, um, my Santa hand, something like this. You can even bring a little bit around this edge if you want to. And then I'm going to blend it with this middle area similarly to how I did the, um, the, the shadow. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got a good coat in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up 
my tan color. So without washing my brush, I'm just picking up that tan color and I can get them to blend in. So this is going to allow me a natural gradient from the dark to the light. So I just am utilizing my mid-tone, which is the tan, to get them all to talk to one another. So I've got that highlight up there. I might make add a little bit more lightness to it, but right now I'm just kind of getting them to blend in, make sure that they look like they make sense, and then I'm going to also put a little bit of a highlight over on the edge of the paper over here. So just getting this to blend in a little bit as it's drying, that's going to work out well for me. And we're going to have lots of handwriting and stuff or written letters on the piece of paper too, so if it's not perfect right now, no worries. Picking up a little bit of my light tan, and I'm going to go ahead and add this as my highlight on my piece of paper up in through here and then just making sure that it's going to blend in with the base color of our paper so something like this and then if you feel like you want to amp up those highlights anymore you can certainly just wash and dry your brush and you can put a little bit of white paint on this upper corner up in through here and then just kind of rub it out. So this is, if you feel that your light area didn't turn out as light as you want, or as it's drying, it's getting a little bit too dark for you, you can always amp it up a little bit with just a little bit of white and just kind of blend it out so it looks like it is, you know, fading into the, um, to the midsection of that piece of paper. And then once you've got your paper all nice and done, you can certainly tweak it all you want. You might wanna do another layer to it. Um, once you've got it done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our hand. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, gray, white, and I might use a little yellow too, but if I do, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to outline my fingers and like any areas that I want to really be pronounced that are gonna make these um, fingers and the palm and the wrist and all that good stuff pop out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of brown. I'm not going for anything other than a little bit of a um, of an outline of sorts that I can follow. So just putting a tiny bit of brown on, on my brush. We have some markers that we can we can utilize to start the process. So you have these two dips right in through here. This is gonna be the outline of one of the fingers. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself a real loose and faint kind of line in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be another finger, but it's gonna be um, the, the forefinger and the thumb are gonna meet here. So I need to have some sort of visual stopping point. So we have a marker right in through here. This I'm going to bring up in kind of a little bit of a curved line. This is going to be the um, the middle finger, the tip of the middle finger. So once I've got it up to this line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these this little like double arc in through here that's going to give me the start of the point for the thumb and the forefinger. I can connect this to over here. And I'm, I'm using soft lines that are not super straight. Um, so this way it provides with so, a, a more realistic feel to it. Once I have that established, I'm gonna finish my, my pointer finger outline. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this up in a real loose way. And then I'm just gonna kind of curve it a little bit in through here and I always think of like what does my finger do when I you know when I bend it he's gonna have gloves on so we don't really need it to be tight and and um, perfect but you know he's got a couple of knuckles and stuff in through there then I'm gonna identify where I want the thumb to go so this is gonna be somewhere in through this vicinity and it's gonna kind of just disappear or be part of the top of the hand in through there. And then I have the bottom part of the thumb as well. So if your fingers end up looking bigger than you wanted them to, don't worry about it because he's wearing gloves. So they can be fluffy and, and full. So that's why I have mine like this as well. Then I have the little palm of the hand somewhere down in through here. So I'm gonna go up my thumb a little bit and then just kind of give myself an arcing line in through here. 
Then what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm gonna just wipe it off on my paper towel. So I still have some brown. I'm gonna pick a tiny bit of black paint up. So this is gonna start, I need to establish my shadow areas. So I've got shadow down below here. I've got shadow inside the hand in through here. I've got shadow in my wrist area. So I have brown plus a little bit of black on my brush right now. And I'm gonna make this area underneath here really dark. So I'm just painting it in with black and brown. You could go all the way black if you wanted to. I think I'm actually gonna pick up a little bit more black just to make sure that I have this really nice and dark down in through here. I'm gonna pull this area up a little bit more to show the, um, the palm area in through here. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm in essence gonna do the same thing up and through here with just a pretty firm dark area. So more black than brown um, to get this little inside area of the hand to make sure that it is really nice and dark and you can see the dimension in it. So just wiping my brush off of my paper towel. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown just to make sure I don't have a real firm edge coming out of the inside of the hand, something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is the rest is gonna be kind of shading of sorts. So we've got some really dark areas established. I'm gonna have it dark going into the, the shirt as well and dark underneath here, but maybe not so firm of areas. So I do have black and brown on my brush right now. And what I'm gonna be doing is where I want those shaded areas, I'm hardly gonna have any paint on my brush. I establish where it's gonna go, and then I just rub it out into that gray area. So the trick here is you do not need a lot of paint on your brush, and you wanna have soft edges. So wherever that palm meets the darkest area, you just wanna have a soft edge there so you don't see the, the firm line to it. I'm gonna do the same thing in through here. So black and brown, not a lot of paint on my brush. So wherever this is gonna meet my, um, my shirt in through here, I'm gonna allow myself to have a shadow and then, or a darker area, and then I'm just going to rub it into the rest of the hand. So we will be amping up the gray on the hand, and if you feel like you went too much, just go ahead and pick up some of that original gray to kind of get it to blend a little bit more, similarly to how we did it in the um, on the piece of paper. So if you feel like you're not getting the blend that you want, just pick up some of that original gray. I feel like I want this a little bit darker in through here, so I just picked up a little bit more black on my brush. And then in through here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So just a tiny bit of black and brown. I want shadows where they make sense, which would be on the bottom side of these fingers, um, casting a shadow on the finger underneath it. So a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time is going to provide me with this little bit of a shadow in between my fingers. And then I just kind of rub it out into the, the gray. And if you feel at any time you have too much paint on your brush or it's not fading the way that you want to. You can always just change the quantity of paint on your brush. I just reloaded to tackle this little finger in through here and yours may end up darker than mine or lighter than mine. It's all right. Maybe maybe your Santa's been working a little bit harder than mine and your Santa's gloves are a little bit dirtier than mine or maybe yours are a little bit cleaner than mine, <laughs> which, which is probably likely more so what's gonna happen. Yours will probably be a lot lighter and whiter than mine. <laughs> I tend to go on the uh, weather dirty side of things. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of this um, thumb in through here because I feel like the bottom side would have a little bit of a shadow. So just whatever little remnants were on my brush, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow, uh, pull this shadow out a little bit further just so it to me looks a little bit more um, like there's some form in through there, maybe a little bit in through here, a little bit here, a little bit there. <laughs> and then once I've got all my shadows in there, now I'm gonna pick up my original gray just to make sure that everything is kind of talking to each other, make sure I have a good coat 
of that gray on here and that the shadow blends nicely into it. And then once I've got this, I'm then going to put my, my highlights on. So my highlight is going to really make the whole finger take shape and it's going to give you that white glove type of look that um, I think is very iconic for Santa's hand. So we're going to just kind of get this on in through here. So uh, my light color is going to be white, but I like to add dimension to my white as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white and add just a teeny tiny dot of yellow to it to start. And this will give me, again, a, a shade of white that's not white, 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 and it'll help me build and get my white to, to have somewhat of a luminescent quality to it. So I've got that pale, like almost white kind of color on my brush, um, and I'm putting it where I feel that the fingers would pop out the most. So if they're going to be, you know, rounded of sorts, they're, they're going to have the, the, the lightest of the light is going to be touching those areas that would pop out or be lit up by that Christmas tree. I'm putting a little bit over in through here and you can see I'm just kind of identifying where I want those bright bright areas I don't necessarily want it to be too bright as it's working its way into the glove and then what I'm going to do is as this is drying I'm just going to kind of blend it out a little bit I will most likely put a touch of white on as well but you can see I'm just going for some soft you know um not necessarily firm lines in through here. I'm really just looking to establish some light areas that are um, going to tell you the the volume of or the form of the hand. So I just put my light areas on in through here. If I feel that this knuckle might come, you know, a little bit down in through here or the hand, we might see some of that highlight in through there. And then I'm just going to kind of keep building this light area. So I'm still just picking up that light yellow and just kind of working it into the areas that I want. Going to get it to fade down into this shadowy area. And you can see just by adding this lightness in the areas that would most likely be popping out the most, it's telling the the story of what's closest to the viewer, what is um, getting the most light. It's giving it more of a 3D look. And you know, we're, I'm not going photorealism here. I just want this to have some sort of form to it and have um, the information that it is, you know, got some life to it. I'm going to pick up some of my gray right now to get this. I want this finger to be a little bit darker than that finger. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it. Right now I'm going to pick up some white so I can have the real bright, of the of the white glove on here but I'm not going to take away all of that yellow or that light yellow that I did I'm just utilizing the white as that final kind of really bright amp of color on top of this to give it that extra little bit of a punch I put the white on in a specific area where I want the brightest highlight and then I just work the edges softly um, to blend out into the neighboring area. And then you can just kind of fiddle with this as much as you want. We're going to be utilizing our uh, large paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our sleeve and any little shadowy areas around it. I'm going to use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, red, white, and maybe some of that light yellow, but I haven't decided on that yet. So I'm going to start with my shadowy areas. They're going to be down at the bottom on the table, um, on the sleeve, and down the red part of the sleeve and down and through here. But I'm going to start with the, um, the white shadowy part and the part there first. So I'm going to go with a little bit of brown and black. And we do not have a very big area that we're doing, so you don't need a lot of paint. So very little bit of paint on my brush. On the table area, I'm really just going to rub in something that is darker than my table down in through this area and right into my sleeve. We'll be putting more information on the sleeve in a minute, but just getting that 
that shadow to just kind of merge in with it. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of my, um, the fluffy part, the cuff. That's what, that's the word I'm looking for, the cuff on my sleeve. So I'm going to just kind of rub in a little bit of this shadow at the bottom of it. And then just, I hardly have any paint on my brush. So I am utilizing this dry brush type of technique to work this shadow up this particular area. So I didn't pick up any white paint either. So this way I, it's just allowing me to be able to see through it and we've got ourselves a nice shadow at the bottom there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some red paint with my dirty brush. So I have black, brown, and now I have red paint on my brush and I'm going to work my way up the, um, the red part of the sleeve, just making sure I have the faint um, idea of it down at the bottom and then I'm just going to kind of tap up. If you have too much black on your brush at this point, I recommend you washing your brush. But if you're if you're good and if it nice and it's starting to turn nice and red on you, the little gray, you know, speckles are fine, but if it's too black right now, you'll want to wash and dry your brush. I'm going all the way up to the top with the red paint and then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint. So I don't need a lot. I didn't wash my brush, just an itty bitty bit on the tip of my brush. And this is going to provide me with a little bit of a highlight on this sleeve up at the top. I don't want it to go white and I don't want it to look like snow. So I'm really just tapping in a little tiny bit of white paint so it makes that red a little bit lighter in through that area to give you that bit of a dimensional element. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash my brush because I wanna go to the cuff, but I definitely don't want red on my brush. So I'm just washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna utilize um, I'm going to utilize some of my gray and white. And if I feel like I'm not getting it to where I want, I'll pick up a little bit of that yellow and white. So right now I've got white plus a little bit of gray. I don't need much. I really want it to be the lightest in through here, but I want it to make sense with the rest of the gray. So that's why I'm picking up some of the original gray as well. So just kind of lightly tapping this in through here. I will utilize, like I said, white it by itself in a minute but right now I'm, I'm just trying to establish some nice texture to it so not much paint on my brush right now letting it fade down into the darkness I'm going to make sure that I have this area nice and tapped in over here maybe keeping this a little bit darker on this underside so that would make sense because that would be you know give you a little bit more dimension if you keep that underside a little bit darker which is why we have that um, black in through there and if you wanted those two to blend in a little bit you could certainly pick up a little bit of black and or brown just to get that to kind of um, fade into there now I'm going to pick up some white on my dirty brush I didn't wash my brush but I'm just picking up some white to get this top to be really really bright in through here maybe this little edge of the cuff over there gets a bit of the bright bright white and I'm going to keep the white, the bright white, primarily at the top of this section. I don't want to bring it too far down um, because I really want the viewer to understand that the light is coming from either up top or from this tree that he's holding in his hand. Um, and I want to have that dimensional element. So I'm not going to go too far down with this white. And I, it's working out for me where I'm not needing to use that light yellow, but if you felt that you weren't getting enough of that luminescent value, you could certainly pick up a little bit of that light yellow. Um, and then just tweak it all you want. That's looking pretty good to me, so I'm feeling pretty happy. So I'm gonna move on to using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your sleeve and your cuff done, you can put your um, large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the pen and the writing on the piece of paper. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, and I might use some brown too, but if I do, I will let you know. You could certainly use your chalk to um, to sketch this out first if, you, if you're nervous about using black paint on small things, <laughs> but I'm not that nervous, so I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm going to be using watered down black paint. So I have my small brush and I'm adding a couple of drops 
of water into it so it's nice and thin like an ink consistency how appropriate for this painting um, but you can certainly that helps me to keep a nice pointy tip and I can you know be a little bit more cautious as I am as I'm painting so I'm gonna plan it out I want this to look like it's coming from the tree portion and coming into um, between these fingers and then kind of landing in through here so I'm thinking that that's pretty good for me so now that I've got my my thought process in I can kind of start in through here and just kind of put it between the fingers where it would make sense and just bringing it right down to that piece of paper and the tip can be um, different variations I, I was looking at different kind of um, ink pens like this and some of them get really really fancy with their tips some of them have these little curls on the end the calligraphy type of pens you can certainly make yours into whatever style of pen that you would like um, if you feel like you need to bring it a little bit deeper into these fingers feel free to do so but you'll want to just make it kind of make sense so if you have to you can you know pull out hold on let me just show you down you can just pull out you know another brush or something to make sure that you've got it kind of connected the way that it makes sense and then just kind of bring it right up into the tree itself so i'm just like i said starting with black paint to get this established and then once i have my black paint on here i'm going to let it sit for a minute while i go and do the writing down below and then on the piece of paper and then i'll add a couple of little details onto that once i've once it sits and dries I, mean, I think i want it a little bit wider i think santa would have a nice wide pen to write with <laughs> it's got to be kind of wide to hold up the big tree part on top anyways all right so now that i've got that done now i just need to decide what i'm going to do for writing um you can if it makes your brain go easier you can certainly flip your painting upside down to be at the angle you would be at if you were writing this but i'm just going to kind of go in an upside down type of way i'm going to mark out i'm going to have maybe six kind of writing lines so and i want it to look like santa's about ready to make a little check mark in through here so i'm going to make one of these i'm going to have these little cute boxes like he's gonna he's checking them off as naughty or nice so that's going to be one and i'm going to keep them kind of at the same um, way as the edge of my paper so two maybe we'll have a third one in through here three and then maybe we've got three on this side so one two three and then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of this little box so again I'm just kind of watching the edge of my canvas to follow along that way so something like that this one will be behind the pen and then i'm going to give myself um just the other side of the box which is going to be kind of in the way of the um the tops of my pieces of paper so i'm just gonna and i'm doing this very sketchily you could certainly make yours more mathematically correct like he's writing on a real ruled line piece of paper or what you know whatever makes your painterly brain happy is totally fine and then i'm going to do a upside down check mark <laughs> but again if you need to flip your canvas over feel free to do so so i'm just going to kind of do this and this one's going to get an x maybe that person was naughty maybe the next one down gets a little upside down check mark and then for the writing i'm not writing anything i'm just doing a whole bunch of squiggly lines <laughs> so i'm going to keep it nice and sketchily i'm not going to push hard i'm going to try and keep it like in line with the or making it make sense with the the way the paper is so i'm just going to kind of skip my my brush along in this like wiggly type of way and of course you could certainly use a smaller brush if you wanted to you could write real words in here if you wanted to that'd be totally cool to make it you know customizable to your family um, and now that I've got that I'm going to do some detail on 
on the pen itself. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white paint and give myself maybe white and brown. White and brown are going to be my detail colors for my for my pen. I'm going to give this just this little maybe um, triangle, little shiny part to it. I'm just really going to um, freehand some um, shiny pieces on this pen so it really looks like you you know he's he's got something that um, has dimension on it so again I just have white and brown on my brush right now and just pulling up and down some light streaks so it looks like it's it's got a little bit of shine to it and then I just need a little shadow underneath my Santa's hand to um, on my piece of paper so I'm washing and drying my small brush I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown and black to give myself a little bit of shadow on the piece of paper of Santa's hand. So I'm just with, uh, the brown is going to be translucent, the black is going to have um, that intensity to it. So if you want to make the shadow a little bit darker as it's meeting Santa's hand like in through here, you certainly could do that. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow underneath um, this finger in through here because I feel like it it needs it. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow over in through here on this side of the piece of paper and I'm doing it right on top of my my detail work because to me that's what shadows do. They you know they land on top of objects and you can see the, the you know depending on the intensity of it you can see that thing underneath it and then I'm going to put a little bit on um, picking up a little bit more brown gonna put a little bit of a shadow in through here like it's the shadow of his thumb just right on, on this piece of paper so again just brown maybe a little bit of water if you need your shot your your paint to be more fluid and spread better you can put a little bit of water on your brush or if you want it to be more translucent you could if you felt like it would be a little bit back here but I think that this works for me and then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so once you've got all of your little pen details and writing on your paper done you can put this um, small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step okay so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting some lights on the tree i'm going to use my medium brush and i'm using just white and red paint but feel free to make your holiday lights on your tree whatever color you'd like i'm using white paint to start and i'm using a good amount and i'm going to be making a million little dots <laughs> so as i do this i tend to really go straight into the canvas with the color and i load my brush often so that way I can continue to get what I refer to as like a, a nice kind of almost symmetrical type of um, circle. If I find that I'm pushing too hard on my canvas, what will happen is m my little dots will splay out and they'll start to look fluffy. <laughs> and I don't necessarily want fluffy dots. So I'm going to really just load my brush often and utilize the um, the tip of it and uh, there you can really make as many as you want as bright or as dark as you want whatever sizes that you want I'm doing a ton and I like to when I'm doing these holiday trees with lights on it I put the lights sometimes outside of the footprint of the tree branches so because to me that'll make it look like there's maybe some lights that are shining from the other side of that tree so you can certainly feel free to you know explore putting the the lights outside of the tree as well it just gives it to me that extra bit of fun glow and if there's any areas on your tree that didn't come out exactly as you wanted to you can strategically hide them with a million little lights <laughs> so know that this is a great step to disguise stuff if there's anything on there that you know you want to disguise and some people like to um utilize a very uniform uh tool to make their their dots all the same size and perfectly round you can certainly do that as well some people use the tip of their brush the end of the brush uh the butt end of the brush to get this uh, equal size um dots and that'll give it a real uniform look I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now and put red paint on it. And when I do my red lights, 
I'm not concerned if I hit a white one because <laughs> the red will definitely just add to the twinkle and if there's white underneath it, so be it. We'll have lighter or pink lights along the way. So feel free to, you know, again, utilize whatever dotting method that you want. And if you want yours to be, have more dots on it than mine or less dots, that's awesome too. Maybe you want yours to be organized like it's garland on the tree. So you could certainly do almost like uh, looped rows of the lights. So that's another, another trick. Um, if you are going about this and as your red is drying or even as your white is drying, if it's not bright enough for you, what you can do because you're working on a dark background and sometimes these paints tend to be uh, translucent or see-through. So as they dry, they're gonna take on some of the color that's underneath them. So as yours are drying, if they end up too dark for you, you can either do another layer on top of them and or you can Put a lighter base coat underneath them. You, if they, if there's a lighter base coat, like if I put red on top of one of these reds, or red on top of one of the whites, it will be brighter as it dries than if it had black behind it. So that's a trick as well. So you put as many lights on yours as you want, and once you've got them all done, we are we have one tiny little step left to go, and it's gonna be with your small brush. So once you've got your lights done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I've got my small brush. I think I'm gonna go bottom right on this one with black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool Christmas image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.